Okay, so we are now in the um, alignment, the tooth alignment phase. And in this phase, we're going to have the opportunity to actually straighten up the teeth. This is the whole kind of purpose of the software, if you will. So one of the very first things I want to introduce you to that is a new feature that uh, we have just kind of concluded testing is that of the new arch uh, snap to curve line. And so what I'm gonna do is if you notice, there's no nodes here visible at the moment. Um, and that's because they're only going to be visible when you click on edit curve and see here's why We now have a symmetric snap to curve line. We can see the dimensions and if you want to um, uh, Change things so it's not symmetric we can go ahead and click this box and I can move things however I want and Then I can reset it to symmetric Okay, so I want most of the time to have a nice symmetric final uh, outcome. So what I'm going to do here is in this case, this patient uh, who is actually my hygienist um, isn't looking for significant changes, but um, let's go ahead and I honestly haven't even tested her case in this software, which is kind of silly for a workflow video, but why not? Uh, now you can see the actual mistakes I might make. So let's go ahead and widen up her arch a little bit because she's a bit narrow. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust that and I can move these nodes however I want. If you needed to, you can actually move the whole curve around. Control Z to undo that. I can rotate the curve if I want. Control Z to, to change that off. If you wanted to quickly measure intermolar width, you could actually bring this right down in here and see. Now this is going to be, you know, double this up to be the actual measurement. So she's fairly narrow at about, um, we'll say roughly 30 millimeters or so. Um, yeah, quite narrow actually. Uh, but that's, you know, that, that's something you can do and then control Z to get out of there. So what I'm going to do here is I am now going to right click on these last molars because most cases I want some anchor teeth. Now this is, that's a, a treatment planning thing. You do what you want to do, but I'll just tell you that I typically want to lock some teeth so that every other tooth can work sort of in relation to those teeth. Um, I find that works for me more predictably. So I'm just gonna let you know, you can't actually align the teeth yet until we want to, um, well, I guess you can, I want these to disappear. I don't want to look at those anymore. So I'm going to click on this. So now I can move teeth. Now, Keep in mind, there are some parameters that we don't have to go over completely here in this video, but I'm going to come up here to tooth, uh, tools, preferences, and I want to show you these two parameters right here, tooth movement. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to try to limit anterior IPR to 0.3 and posterior IPR to 0.5 millimeters. You can dial it down to zero if you want. The software will override that, but it will warn you if it has to. Okay, um, it's sort of like press OK, but just be aware we're exceeding the maximum allowable. So let's click OK and let's see what happens. This tooth is pretty blocked out here, so it's going to need some space. And I honestly don't know what it's going to look like. So let's go ahead and click on um, snap. All, uh, sorry, snap all teeth right here. And there it goes. It's generated. It's aligned everything and it said, OK, well, I'm going to need 0.25 millimeters of IPR pretty much everywhere to accomplish this. And if you're okay with that, great. That's, that's our, um, that's our, our setup. So that's, um, you know, if you're fine with that, then great. If you wanted to say, no, I don't like doing posterior IPR, you could come up here, you can go to preferences. You can dial this one down. Let's just say the 0.1. Um, and I'll explain that in just a minute. So now let's click snap all teeth and it should try to front load. See, it gave me a warning. It's still going to do it, but it says it's okay. It's 0.3 in the anterior where I told it no more than 0.3. It's actually, um, or sorry, it, it, um, exceeded it in the posterior because it needed to get some IPR somewhere. So it maxed out the anterior and exceeded it in the posterior. So again, you can move those numbers around all you want. Now, if you really want to sort of tweak this a little different way, what we can do is we can take the curve line and if we bring the curve closer to the teeth, turn that off and say snap all teeth. So let's see what happens then. Well, the IPR values are reducing a bit. Okay, 0.1 here, now 0.2, it was 0.25. So by bringing it lower, it actually causes all the teeth to flare out a little more. I don't do that a lot, but if I just need to fine tune things just a little bit, that's what I'm gonna do. 
So I'm going to come back up to my preferences because I don't like having it quite like that. And let's just say we'll limit each one to 0.3. So let's say snap all teeth. Let's let it rebalance everything out. And now we're at the 0.2 range everywhere. Personally, I'm, I'm probably okay with it in this arch unless I'm really going to try to treat to truly develop everything. Um, I'm okay with that. I'm going to give you a little behind the scenes uh, view for me. I will typically only IPR on this case, basically 0.1 to 0.15. Basically take a strip through there, open up the contacts pretty smoothly and leave it there. And by doing that, um, I'm underdoing the estimated IPR, but the truth is the software kind of has to guess a little bit. So I would rather have to do a little more IPR throughout treatment, just do that little, that, you know, um, rounded down version at the beginning and kind of see where I need it in the future. So we got the IPR looking pretty good. I'm going to turn that off for now. Now I'm just looking at incisal gingival relationship. Do I need to intrude or extrude teeth? Truth be told, I don't. Her case is great. Uh, I, don't, I don't need to mess with any of that, so I'm not going to. If I wanted to, I can grab a tooth and um, move it down individually. Don't like that. Control Z to undo it. All right. So, but that uh, these arches looking pretty darn good to me. So now I'm going to go down the mandible. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say I'm going to lock these two teeth. Because I know I'm not going to move those. I'm going to show the opposing arch. I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to scroll down here on this man, the, this uh, panel over here, and I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom. I'm going to find this jaw transparency slider, and I'm going to slide it so it's pretty darn transparent. What that's going to allow me to do is to see the curve and try to position it where I need it to be. Okay. Sometimes I need to lower it a little ways so I can see it lined up with these teeth. And then I can say, okay, I need this to go a little bit wider here. I don't want this to bump into these canines. And I can move these out a little bit farther. And so you can see what I'm doing in relationship to the opposing arch. Now, if I need to asymmetrically adjust it, I already showed you how to do that. But I'm going to leave it like that. Now, I might have to re-raise it. Let's go ahead and uh, turn off Edit Curve. So we can see where these teeth are. And let's say snap all teeth. All right. Looking pretty good to me. I think we got some anterior, some premature anterior contacts. So I'm going to have to adjust that a little bit. Also looks like we're getting a little bit of a cusp to cusp contact here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, turn off the opposing for a second, edit curve. And I had to lower it a ways. So I'm just gonna bring that back up. Click snap all teeth. Looking better. That anterior is looking pretty darn good there, actually. And the posterior, I'm just going to go ahead and bring this these molars in just a touch. Snap all teeth. And that looks about right. OK. I can also go in and uh, I'm not going to spend much time on it in this video, but I can turn off the curve. Just go ahead and hide it completely. Click on show collisions and that'll actually show me sort of a heat map of occlusal contacts. And if that's the case, I can start tipping teeth in more or less. I can also intrude or extrude. I can say, okay, this tooth needs to come down a little bit. Probably going to have them uh, use a munchie and really chew on that tooth to try to really make sure it intrudes. So there's some other mechanics to help with that, um, but this is that's more specific treatment planning of a case, and I really want this video to focus more on um, how to use the software. So I'm not going to spend much time on that in this video, um, but you get the idea. You might want to push these laterals down a little bit more or push the upper ones out. I'll go ahead and push them all down just a tiny bit. And let's get this one down. Occlusal contacts look pretty good there. And so now I'm going to turn off collisions because every time you do, every time you move a tooth with the collisions on, it ends up having to recalculate. So I can move a little faster if I turn that off. Okay, so that's it. 
So I'm actually glad that I've intruded some teeth because the next phase in a moment, well, in two phases from now, you're going to see a, a, the other really cool update to the software. Okay, so now what we have to do, the last thing, we've got everything lined up. We see, okay, this is what I want my teeth to look like. This is, I like this smile. I like the occlusion. Everything's sort of fine-tuned. I'm ready to go. Now we need to tell it, okay, how many, how often do we want trays to be swapped out? Do we want monthly, weekly, uh, bi-weekly, or weekly? And I'm going to go with bi-weekly. I will tell you that I do fairly often increase that, meaning I'll give, I'll treatment plan it as bi-weekly, but I'll end up actually changing out the trays every week. Uh, that's a, again, that's more of a, a deeper discussion but um, for now I'm gonna pick bi-weekly and then I'm gonna click to continue to edit steps now we're doing some arch development here some widening of the arches so I wouldn't be surprised yeah if it's in the 15 uh, to 20 ra tray range um, yeah even 25 on the upper not surprising um, on a case like this you might think oh it's got it doesn't have very many because this is anterior teeth but really what's really happening, we're moving a lot of posterior teeth widening and developing those arches. And when you start doing that, those posterior teeth move much more slowly. So you're going to be adding treatment time. So there you go. So now what I need to do, um, yeah, I'm going to pick up in the next video how this video works or how this step works.